The enthalpy change of hydration is defined for the OCR specification as the enthalpy change for dissolving one mole of gaseous ions in water to make one mole of aqueous ions. In this video, I'll take you through an overview of the equations, insight into the ion dipole attractions being formed, and an explanation of the trends we see when moving from one ion to the next on the periodic table. Before I do get really started though, I would very much appreciate it if you could let YouTube know I still exist by leaving this video a like, subscribing to stay updated, and leaving a comment below with what other content you'd like to see in the future to help support your A-level chemistry revision. The equations that you can actually see on screen now, which represent the definitions, are actually quite straightforward. The only weird little quirk is that instead of actually showing H2O in the equation, we show AQ, the aqueous state symbol, as this represents us dissolving the gaseous ions in water. If you think about it, if we showed H2O, then this would suggest reaction with H2O, and the balancing would be all off. How would we represent those oxygens and hydrogens on the right-hand side? So this way, we can make sure the equation is balanced to match the definition. What isn't really explained by the equations alone, though, is what's happening if we were to take a closer look at the cations and the anions. The interactions surrounding each ion are very important, and they help us understand why these enthalpy of hydration values are always exothermic. Way back long ago, we all studied how water molecules are polar and have these partial charges used to demonstrate dipoles. Well, these dipoles are now what's attracted to the ions, and we form what is more formally described as an ion-dipole attraction. For some metal cations, this will actually be a dative covalent bond, which I think is an excellent link to the transition metals topic in the second year of your OCRA Chemistry A level. For the cations, like Na+, the delta minus oxygen from the water is what's attracted, and for the anions, like Cl-, it's the delta positive hydrogens. The formation of these ion dipole attractions releases energy, hence they are always exothermic. There is actually also a trend to these enthalpies of hydration, and considering where sodium is positioned on the periodic table, I thought it best to describe the trends using potassium and magnesium. Potassium actually has a less exothermic enthalpy of hydration, and this is because it forms weaker ion-dipole attractions with the polar water molecule, since the potassium ion is larger. The key trend feature here is, the larger the ionic radius, the less exothermic the enthalpy of hydration. Magnesium, on the other hand, has a more exothermic enthalpy of hydration than the sodium ion, and this is primarily because it has a higher ionic charge, causing for a stronger ion-dipole attraction than the sodium ion can to polar water molecules. The key trend feature here is, the higher the ionic charge, the stronger the ion-dipole attraction the ion can make with a polar water molecule, and the more exothermic the enthalpy of hydration. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the video description for any links and updates to this content, and I'd really appreciate it if you could leave this video a like before you go, and comment with what content you'd like to see more of in the future to help support your A-level in chemistry. Until next time, though, happy revising.